and welcome to the Cinema 9 podcast. I am your host, Travis Roy, and this is our other host, Eric Branstrom. Hi, Eric. Good evening, Travis. What's going on? I understand you're in beautiful West Virginia? I am. I'm in beautiful West Virginia for the Thanksgiving holiday. You know, going to spend some time with some family. But we're not going to be spending any time with our other co-host, Mike Govier, tonight. He's with us in spirit, but not um, digitally, not Zoomy, I guess. Uh, he is chiming in and like watching us. For instance, he just said, yummy. Okay. Uh, I guess in reference to Thanksgiving or maybe just West Virginia. I don't, I don't know. Maybe both. I don't know. So he's here, but he's not here. Um, yeah. Once again, not a, not a full boat on the Cinema 9 podcast. We'll get there. <laughs> Someday. <laughs> we'll have a full month with all three of us <laughs> regularly here again. What the uh, hell's going on, man? Like, uh, do you usually go down uh, to West Virginia for Thanksgiving? Or sure, yeah, yeah. I mean, I you know, this is, I got family down here, so I, I come down here pretty often. So it's an it's an easy drive from Detroit. It's only like six hours. So yeah, gorgeous. Um, Thanksgiving is the one holiday that we kind of keep to ourselves. We start a tradition of just. Uh, my wife and I and the kid just doing it at home together with no family because mm. we run around so much just like three short weeks later for Christmas and then her birthday. So nice to just kind of sit at home, cook, watch Christmas Chronicles and fucking enjoy some dirty. Sure. Yeah. Uh, I'm looking forward to getting through Thanksgiving so I can start watching Christmas movies. I'm ready, but I will not do it until my Thanksgiving meal is inside of me. This is the deal I've made with myself. Christmas horror? Are you sw- are you making a full transition? I mean, I'll you know I'll all Christmas. I mean, any Christmas movies, I'll I'll watch them all. You know, I'm ready. You see Krampus? That, yeah, of uh, course. I've seen I every. Never I've, saw that. It's okay. It's I mean okay. it's it's got um Adam Scott, so you want it to be really good, but it's not as good as it could be. Well, the guys that made Trick or Treat made that for some reason. I just didn't bother turning up. Yeah, it's it's worth catching, but not nothing I'm going to watch over and over again. If you want good Christmas horror, you got to go with uh, Rare Exports. That's a, that's your Christmas horror film. Exports. So, yeah. I don't think I've ever heard of that. <laughs> okay, um, check that out. No, I, I, you have, because I talked about it, I think, last year around Christmas. It's, a, I think, a Dutch film slowly Ooh. gaining a uh, cult following. Definitely worth checking out. Okay. Um, weird. Weird horror movie, but good. Wow. All right. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we're doing Green Room. Yeah. It's exciting. I'm excited. We're going to talk. Uh, uh, full disclosure: we were we were going to do a, a our second horror corner episode. We really liked doing our our first horror corner episode. It was a good opportunity for me and Travis just to like go all out on horror without Mike having to like twiddle his thumbs and wait for us to shut the fuck up about horror movies. Um, we were going to do Smile, uh, mostly because it made just a fucking killing at the box office yeah. and. You know, it's just been all over the internet. You see this face every time you go on the internet. That face is smiling. So yeah, we right. checked it out. We'll have some things to say, but uh, we are just going to keep it to a uh, standard viewing pick uh, discussion today uh, for some reasons that we'll disclose a little bit later. <laughs> well, let's get into our quarantine viewing picks. Yeah. So let, unless you want to tell us how Griffith, Indiana is doing. How's Griffith, Indiana? Uh, outside is fine, but I just got out of uh, like a five, six day flu, flu A. Uh, I was bedridden in hell and missed back. I can't fucking believe I missed backdraft. I was looking forward to it so much, but I was on my deathbed and I'm now finally, finally fully recovered. I spent seven hours a day working on my new uh, uh, film on my new short film. And that's exciting. On a fun. Uh, so I'm just happy to be back. You sound good. I mean, you got so, still a bit, little bit of a sniffle. It sounds going like on there. Yeah. 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 I mean, you're, you're, you're someday you're going to have a, a full someday. month of health. A full month of I health, a full healthy. month of all three podcast hosts being together at the same time. I think that that day is coming, and it's called like Christmas Witch. December. Like not, <laughs> yeah, to not die and to have all my co-hosts. It's not asking for much. <laughs> it seems reasonable. Yeah, <laughs> well, I'm glad you're doing better. Good to have. Good to have you back. Uh, wish Mike could be here, but uh, next week probably. Sure. I don't even. I mean, presuming that he tells us what film he's picked, we'll find out we'll see. later. I guess. So I've been watching some movies. We usually start with me, so I'll start mm-hmm. with me, as I, as I often do. I didn't, I didn't watch that much actually. So uh, let's actually go ahead and start with Smile. Uh, sure. Okay. Let's let, let's get that out of the way. Mm-hmm. Uh, I watched Smile on Saturday. 
and I was prepared to watch it a second time before our planned horror corner episode and then i texted mm-hmm. our, our my dear co-host <laughs> eric and said is there really like 20 40 minute conversation here or because i mean uh it follows without the sex pretty much it follow it follows meets fallen with no sex fallen plus the plus uh the grudge or not, it, not the, the, grudge, the ring the yep, ring i mean it. Uh, mm-hmm. The ring plus fallen plus uh, it follows. I mean, it's extremely, yeah. extremely derivative film. Yeah, it was. Um, which I mean, a lot of movies I love, like from the eighties and nineties horror, are very derivative. Same fucking thing, and I can sit back and enjoy them. So part of me was watching this and was kind of reminded of those kind of uh, nine, especially nineties horror. This reminded me a lot. You got this ridiculous uh, setup, and then like the rules. And then, like, how are they going to figure this out? Right. And, you know, so, yeah, that part I did enjoy about the movie. Among other things, I like Susie Bacon. I thought she was a fantastic actress. I, I really I, like her. I thought she did phenomenal. I'd like mm-hmm. to see more of her. I thought that um, someone saw the video for Aphex Twins Come to Daddy and decided to make <laughs> yeah. a, a movie about it. Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking <laughs> that. Come to Daddy. Yeah, that's pretty mm-hmm. much Come to Daddy. Uh but yeah, I did think that the lead actor, she did really well. Mm-hmm. I, I thought that there were moments. That, I mean, I'm not usually a big fan of jump scares, but I thought that there were some effective ones in this movie. Um, I think that I am sick to death of pets dying in horror movies. I just want it to stop. Make it stop. I know it won't ever stop. Uh, no but way. like, but graphic, graphic death in the movie. But I won't, I won't get into uh to, we won't do spoilers, I guess, since we're not doing a proper uh, separate yeah. episode for this. But uh, I, I found it worth seeing. I'm not going to rush to watch it over and over again. What about you? <sighs> I'm sitting there watching it. Okay. And I'm like, oh, this is trash. <laughs> then I start getting into it. Like uh, once things start to come together, like that first 10 minutes, it's like before it goes to the credits, I'm like, this is a really great short horror movie. It's just called mm-hmm. Smile. Yeah. And then like, there's more to it i'm like well come on we're gonna like have to like visit the guy to find out what the what this curse is and like then they figure it out blah 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 who cares um so yeah um very familiar very it's like like you've seen fallen same thing as soon as like she's like oh i think i figured out how to defeat the smile curse i'm like this (laughs) is fallen same thing happens um but yeah i mean i'm kind of so-so on it and the more i think about it I actually think I like it more than Barbarian. And <laughs> we actually did a horror corner episode on that. Really? I think I do. I huh. haven't thought about Barbarian since we talked about it. And I think I'll be watching this a couple more times because there was some really, really cool imagery in this. Like the final creature, you know, I'm not spoiling anything. There's something at the end. Yeah, the, the ending was really was, cool. The ending was strong. Uh, I thought that there was some really, really strong cinematography um, Mm -hmm. moments, particularly these Mm -hmm. upside down shots of the city and nature and stuff. I thought that stuff was, it looked good. Um, Uh, Yeah. I I definitely like barbarian more personally, but I could, I mean, I'm not, I wouldn't be mad to watch this movie again, but I wouldn't rush to see a sequel. Yeah. Uh, Also reminded me of, I think it reminded me a lot of nightmare on Elm street. Like, yeah, I love these. I love like, you rarely see them. Like you, you get these like, ghost movies like you go to the house and like oh all the shit happens the bump in the night stuff and then like it turns out you got to unlock the mystery for the ghost to be at peace there's none of that bullshit here it's straight a curse is on like how are you going to deal with this situation and it's fun the rules are fun i like i like where it goes so i i like i like the movie man i don't know who this guy parker finn is i didn't bother to look into him but i'm not familiar I'm, either. I'm interested young 35 year old kid um yeah, it's based on his his short film, Laura Hasn't Slept, from 2020, which I guess just made a, a huge stir. So as is the case in a lot of these things, they they say, hey, let's let's expand this short and make it a feature. Well, that was the case with Green Room, so go figure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so yeah, that's that. I mean, I give it a recommendation. I think especially if you're not as old and snobby as we are, who's just seen everything. I imagine a lot of like younger people are going to respond to this because it's something that hasn't really been in theaters in a long time since since the nineties. Just a fun rule based horror scare. Yeah, 
Yeah, and I think if you haven't seen it follows, then you'll probably be like, "This was amazing." Yeah, if you have, you'll be like, "Oh, it's, it follows." <laughs> yeah, right. It it follows. So yeah, that's <laughs> that. Yeah, uh, I watched some other stuff because uh, me and Mike plan on doing a uh, special episode on the MCU after mm. this last installment from the uh phase four comes out tomorrow in our or the day after tomorrow in our time that the uh guardians of the galaxy christmas Mm -hmm. special is the official end as far as wikipedia says i don't know i'm it seems like a legitimate authority to me anyways so so i watched thor love and thunder and i rewatched um dr strange in the multiverse of madness i'll talk more about those when i oh yeah have you warmed up to dr strange too because you hated it I did hate it. Uh, I'll I'll talk more about those when I do okay. that episode with, with right. Mike. I'll be but, listening. Um, but it was yeah, it was good to get a second viewing of both of those. I figured that was necessary. I I watched Disenchanted because okay. I, you know I I I liked Enchanted quite a mm-hmm. bit. Yeah, so I thought too. I'd give in Disenchanted a, a a run for its money. I've never been so checked out in a movie. Oh. I think in my life, but I mean, like I didn't turn it off, but I very much just started doing <sighs> other things and just kind of let it play out and uh, it's just like didn't care and other people i talked to felt similarly it just you know th- this whole doing a sequel 30 years later or 20 years later thing it can be real hit or miss and uh i, I just th- i thought it was funny that the premise of the movie was basically and this is the very very beginning so this isn't a spoiler uh th- that happily ever after didn't work out so well because apparently marriage involves having kids and uh, I thought that was pretty funny. And that's why she was disenchanted. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, more or less. But yeah, you know. So Was it I the same it. creative team? Because I, re- I really liked the first one. I really liked the, the original too. I, I actually didn't check the, the crew. I mean, the, the whole yeah. cast is back. So I just kind of assumed. Mm. But I didn't look that closely. Okay. So I guess that my main recommendation for the week would be the only other movie I watched that wasn't green room or one of the other ones I've already seen. I watched this movie and I'll be honest with you, Eric, as I watched this movie, I thought to myself <laughs> numerous times, Eric would hate this so oh, much. Oh, Jesus. Um, I, I watched a movie called all my friends hate me from, from last year. Okay. And the premise of the film is that a guy goes away for the weekend with some of his old college buddies. He hasn't seen in a while. And it's like, they rent a house and it's they're all together and he he is just constantly on edge trying to figure out if he is being hypersensitive or if his friends are actively like trying to work against him and like perhaps even harm him it's really really um anxiety inducing but uh i didn't hate it i saw this uh yeah i saw this last year when it came out uh i i liked this movie yeah, I remember this movie. I, I did I did like it. And I normally don't like comedy horror at all. It's just it, it never works for me unless it's Evil Dead. But yeah, yeah I, I I dug that film. Okay. I I didn't think that you wouldn't like it because of the filmmaking or anything. I just thought mm-hmm. that you wouldn't like it because of the premise. It just seemed like like the social anxiety, the horror movie. Um so, <laughs> <laughs> so wow. but I, I totally I, I did like it. I I thought it was pretty mm-hmm. good. But uh, and then I watched Green Room, so I didn't. I didn't watch all that much this week. Well, what are you, going? you get anything? I was gone. Um, I've been been on the show for two weeks, but I didn't watch a uh, a ton of stuff. Um, I did get around to Nope, and I liked Nope. Um, I haven't really thought about it at all since I saw it, though, and it's already been a couple of weeks. I don't know, man. I feel like it's one of these movies that, like, you're you really are supposed to like, and if you talk negatively about it, people are gonna be like, "Yeah, you don't know what you're talking about." I don't know. <laughs> it felt very hodgepodgey to me, like all the Stephen Wen stuff and the Gordy stuff. I was texting you, my mind was blown. I was fucking terrified. I haven't been scared in a movie in years. But then, like everything about the, the what what the, is actually going on, I found myself kind of bored. For, for all of the Ooh, stuff on the ranch really? and stuff. Oh, I found wow. myself kind of bored. It's but like huh. with them like wanting to like get this shot of it. I'm like, it is 2022. Like no one will fucking believe you, even if you get the perfect shot from this perfect cinematographer. Right. Like right. It, who cares? <laughs> like no one will believe you. anybody could make that on their computer. Like so right. what is going on here? Um, but yeah, I mean, I'll come back around to it, but I, I wasn't blown away. Um can I, can I, can I please. say four words that I think help? Which is fourth billing Michael Wincott. 
Okay, yeah. Um, right? Michael Green Winkler, 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 Winkler. does it hold up? I would close by saying, well, any movie starring with White Michael Wincott in it holds up. I don't care how bad it is. Love it Michael Wincott. Yeah, I, I dude, give me more. Yeah. Give me yeah. more. Um, the Wonder. The Wonder. I, I've been looking forward to The Wonder, and um, I, I dug it. It's, it's man, it's like molasses. It's so, it's just like you expect it to be. Like, you look at it, you read about it, you know it's going to be so goddamn slow. Everyone's going to be just walking around and just sitting there looking at stuff. And, th and that happens. People just <laughs> sit around there looking at stuff Ooh. and these long, boring shots. It's good. It's good. Um, I've never been a big Florence Pugh fan. I know, I know, she's incredible, but I, for me, she just stands there looking at stuff. She's really good in this, so I'm starting to come around to what everyone's going on. I really uh, hope she yeah. stays out of these silly cartoon movies and does really good work like this, because uh, yeah, she's fantastic in this. I mean, you did see Midsummer, right? I, I hated it. I thought her performance said it was awful. Dude, like sometimes the things you say make me just think, why do I do a <laughs> fucking show about movies with you? <laughs> yeah, she was terrible in it. She didn't even look scared. Oh my god, uh, the entire absurd. time. The things you say are absurd. All right, continue. Dude, I'm sure it'll, I'm sure it'll come in as a spotlight film, and I'll have a lot to say. Uh -huh. uh, but yeah, I, I dug the film. It was creepy. It had a lot to say about culture and society and all that fun stuff, society. especially in the 18th century or 19th century. Um, okay, dude, dude, I hit play on. A Christmas Story Christmas. I grew up with the Christmas Story. I, I I watch it every year. When it was on TBS, like they were doing like 24 hours of it and it'd be on like all day. Yeah. I would yeah. sit there and watch it like five times and never get bored. Like I would be looking forward to the next time it aired later that day. Uh, so good. And then when they announced, it, they announced the sequel, I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? Maybe 20 years ago. And maybe if they have a good story. But what is going on here? Uh, so I hit play. Did you see it? No, I mean, like I said, I'm waiting until after Thanksgiving to watch my oh, Christmas movies. So. I thought it was awful. I mean, I thought it was awful. Well, my I'm scratching my well. head. Yeah, it lower your expectations and you might like it. I got a feeling anyone that likes it, if you ask them why they liked it, they'll be like, well, they're, they're, they're all back. Like, I remember them. And like, that's them. Like, okay, name one scene. Name one thing that happens that's funny. They won't be able to do it. <laughs> I sat there. I'm, I've been thinking about it the past couple of days. I'm like, I wonder if I can remember any scenes or anything funny that happened from the original. Like, there's like 40 hilarious little scenarios, like these little snippets of life. There's none of that in this. It's just people. It's just like old Ralphie sitting around talking to his friends, and it's Christmas time. It makes me scratch my head. Like, what is going on with movies these days? Like, how does the script get the green light? Did anyone read the script? And was anyone like, like, okay, like, I don't know. I, I don't get it. What? What the hell, man? Anybody read the goddamn there script? <laughs> there he is. He's fucking bozo blowing in. <laughs> <laughs> you cut off my rant. I'm sick of these movies. I nowadays. love that rant, man. Keep it going. I'm sorry. I just had to do that. No, I'm You're done. Welcome. I'm just frustrated. I'm frustrated. Like all this time, and this is what you come up with. This script is what you turn in, and it gets approved. Yep. What the fuck is going on here? Hey, Billingsley wrote it, right? Paychecks. Yeah. And in right, it, its heart is in the right place. It's definitely in the right place, and it is—it's—it's it's, spirit is in the right place. It's like PG. It's like it's, it's cute, but it's just like what? What is this script? And there's no laughs. Nothing happens. No laughs. Zero fun. I mean, what the hell's going on these days with people yeah. getting have fun and, in a Christmas movie? And once again. Leave it to 2022. We're going to catch up with a beloved character 40 years later. He's a fucking <laughs> loser in the beginning, and he's got to crawl his way out of his shitty life that he's been living the entire time since we last saw him. Every single legacy character. They make these sequels. The movie opens. They're a fucking loser. Oh Why? Didn't Travis just talk about That's movies Eric. to be real hit or miss 40 years later? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I just mentioned that on this show. That's too bad. Ago. Mike, good to see you. We're all here. Damn it. I'm is this a check hey Is this a cameo? Are you, are no, you this uh, is, locked in? This is a full commitment from Michael wow. Govier. Uh, I'm going to catch the best part of the show when we get to talk about Green Room. I wasn't going to miss Green Room. I mean, it was... Oh, there we go. Travis is creature of habit. He feels much He's more comfortable. back where he belongs. On my right. <laughs> might be on... Yeah. Your left? I don't know. But yeah, I'm here. Sorry, I, I couldn't be here on time, guys. But okay, it now. doesn't matter it's now. Huge. 
Yeah. We're so all um, continue, Eric. Continue. Well, forth. I, I, I was going to say, I'm going to wait to talk about Stutz until you come back. Uh, but here you are. We both watched it. I got a couple of things to say, Mike, but it's, it seems like you really like this documentary by filmmaker uh, Jonah Hill. I wouldn't say that. Uh, oh. I got caught up in like the immediate excitement of like, oh, this was like something unique. We're a, someone we know, a celebrity. He's an actor, but he's yeah. a celebrity. Jonah Hill. It's his personal psychiatrist. And That's he right. does a documentary about the psychiatrist. And Weird. I was like, oh, wow, we're going to learn a lot of cool stuff. And you do learn a lot of cool stuff. But I think I overhyped it in the moment. <laughs> it's been a few days now. And I... I mean, I still want to talk about Stutz. Like me and Leanne really enjoyed it, and we took some things from it. But mm. I can't really sit here and tell you, Eric, that it was otherworldly or like, wow, this is my new life foundation. Stutz is how I live. Let me lay out the playbook that Stutz is giving us. Here we go. Stutz it's a very bizarre life. film. Like throughout the film, Jonah Hill would just stop and be like, uh, so like we're making this movie and like, hey, how's our movie going to end? And like, uh, what should we talk about? Like, just fucking make the goddamn movie. Um, yeah. And, and there is some good there. Stutz seems like a very interesting guy. And I think a lot of the stuff that seems rooted in a lot of counterculture stuff uh, could help a lot of people. I I, I just ended a, a, lo a long, long therapy relationship. My therapist decided to up and move away. And that really? there goes my uh, therapist. Sucks. But it's it's just I, if I was sitting there in front of Stutz, nothing he'd be saying would do have any impact on me at all. I'm not the close your eyes and imagine yourself in the jungle, and then you open your eyes and it's like wow, thank you so much for that. I'm like that would not work for me. Can I? Yeah. Um, <laughs> real quick, I mean, I when I moved from Philly, I've been doing Zoom sessions with my therapist. Can't do time. that. Can't yeah, do it. He offered. He did offer telehealth, but I I can't do it. I can't uh, do it. I thought it was I me me personally. I'd rather have like someone that I built that whole rapport and knows all my shit it's, yeah you know, but yeah yeah it's a tough choice right? works for you, you know, I get it. It. yeah okay. but yeah it's an interesting film mike and i jonah hill very guarded throughout it i was like kind of shouting at the screen like dude you're gonna fucking make the movie talk about yourself like mm -hmm. let loose why are you being so guarded you make this movie and then you hold everything back i thought you were you're gonna uh, expose yourself here but a little frustrating yeah. but interesting i mm -hmm. i didn't know that is uh i didn't know his brother had passed I had no sucks. idea you know um i don't know his whole family tree i do know his sister uh beanie steinfeld yeah. she's yeah, an beanie. actress yeah uh, in her own and she's, she's good. good yeah she is good she's great and uh ladybird for example mm. but I know I was really excited about Stutz in the moment, and now that it's been three or four days, I just don't have that same effect. It didn't stick with me. Now that's either me being in denial and not wanting to deal with my own life, which is fair, wow. totally fair. Uh, uh, what? What are you saying? Oh, Leanne's saying, "Yeah, that's probably what it is." She's yelling from upstairs. You're in denial. <laughs> I'm in denial of my own existence. You don't know me. Go away. I love you. Uh, in the end. <laughs> Stutz is something I would recommend you check out. If you like to see people in action talking about methods for, you know, coping with the challenges of life and trauma and pain, which everybody has, you know, it's pretty much to be human is to have trauma. I think it's pretty universal now, at least in this uh, country. But I hear trauma is popular elsewhere in the world, too. So, uh yeah. Uh, right? Right. Like, <laughs> so much oh, look at you guys. I got you guys stone cold. That's funny. Uh, yeah. In the end, check out Stutz. I even told my mom, like, Mom, you got to watch Stutz. And I, I got to watch. Maybe I'll watch it again. I even told Steve, hey, friend of the show, and I want to give a shout out. He's been watching or listening to all of our episodes lately. Steve Guile has been on a Cinema yeah. 9 bender. It's hey, Steve. Steve. Love you, buddy. What up, dude? Appreciate yeah, it, man. He's loving the show. He's going back. He's He was listening to... Like episode 70 the other day. He's just burning through all these. He's loving it, which all you guys could do, by the way, on the YouTube channel or on your favorite podcast platform. That's right. But I even told Steve to watch it, and Steve offered to... <laughs> he actually offered to live watch Stutz with us while we were watching it that <laughs> night, which... If you don't know Steve, like I just wouldn't think Steve would be into Stutz. Like, I don't know. He's, I mean, Steve is a very cerebral guy. He's, a, he's a open to the world and wisdom and knowledge, but I do get the feeling and steve i could be wrong that sometimes he doesn't want to like he, i think he would make fun of like the self-help world for example so i was surprised though he wanted to live watch it with us and we uh we passed that up so steve i'm sorry we passed up that opportunity and i apologize hmm stop fine about it 
But uh, <laughs> we appreciate you watching. And I recommend the movie. I mostly, Mike. I think I want. I want to see more movies like this. I thought it was, yeah, daring, uh, very pretentious. It was like Jesus <sighs> Christ. It, it's for it wasn't naked enough to be as pretentious as it was, but yeah. an interesting film. I like to see more like it. Yeah, right up. Was there anything else? Me? Oh, the cutting edge. But yeah, I watched the cutting, the cutting edge, edge with DB Sweeney. So big. Yeah. <laughs> Is that the ice skating movie? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, classic. Yeah. On. I don't know if it's a classic, but yeah, yeah, it cover. is. Uh, for some it is, folks. isn't it? I'm not saying it's like Casablanca classic, but I mean, you know, it's a 90s classic. <laughs> okay. Fair point. Uh, it, what do you got, Mike? Okay, buddy. Oh, what do I got? I, you know, I was on Netflix a lot because I watched Stutz, and so I watched <laughs> some other stuff on there. Um, I can't remember what I watched on there, though, but mm-hmm. I think I watched some documentaries. You know, I'm into that. I watched the one on uh, Three Mile Island, which was – I'm always interested in things like that. Three Mile Island, for those of you that are younger, if you're happening to see this and you're, I don't know, 18, 16, 14, there was a nuclear plant on Three Mile Island in Pennsylvania, and there was there was a meltdown of sorts. It wasn't as major as Chernobyl or anything, of course, but – it was covered up in a way which it actually was worse than they revealed at the time. So, which, you know, not to, you know what? Yeah, go for what a shock, right? Mm-hmm. But what's crazy is the movie I talked about a few months back that I watched for the first time, The China Syndrome, was a movie of Michael Douglas and Jack Lemon and Jane Fonda. A great movie. I recommended it, I think, about six, seven months ago on the show. And it came out 12 days before Three Mile Island happened, and the China Syndrome is literally that definition, that term was created about how the nuclear shit, the leakage, the stuff, the toxic waste that would kill us, nuclear stuff, I'll call mm-hmm. it. They call it the China Syndrome because it would bury down in the center of the earth. And, you know, there was once upon a time people used to believe that you could dig a hole. I think Bugs Bunny did this. Dig a hole from the United States to China. So that's right. why they call it that. Really stupid. Really, that's really stupid. stupid. I didn't know where that came from. That is stupid. Huh. Yeah, I didn't know until I watched Three Mile Island. They explained it. I'm like, oh, that's really dumb. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, you know, if you like documentaries, check out the Three Mile Island one on Netflix. And then, uh, you know. Other than that, I, I did watch Green Room, of course, and I don't think there was anything else of note where I sat there and I said to myself, you know what? This is a film. Fuck. Oh, it is Thanksgiving. So it is. I was thinking really hard about Thanksgiving movies. Now, there's the obvious ones like Planes and Trains and Automobiles. Home for That's the like Holidays. Probably the, of course, Home for the Holidays. Of course. You can watch that episode anytime. Well, you can't watch that one, but you can listen to that one. Yeah. That was like episode 30? That was one of our first earlier episodes, yeah. But yeah, yeah are you yeah, saying there's, there's, that one. there's only so many Thanksgiving movies? Is that is that where you're going with this? I think yeah. that's fair to say. Sure. I, uh, is Dutch a Thanksgiving movie? Absolutely. <laughs> it's Planes, okay. Trains, and Automobiles, that... literally with, with the same writer, John Hughes, and yep. uh, just with a kid instead of an old man. I... Did it from memory. Yeah, I did it from memory. Uh, I didn't watch Dutch, but I was like, okay, he definitely picks him up for some break and like has to get him home, but yeah. I didn't know if it was Thanksgiving break or yeah. Christmas break. Yeah. Instead of a woman, fantastic memory. Thanksgiving movie. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's a good one. Oh, great call. Yeah, Son of a Woman. Um, I did watch one that I thought about bringing to the show, and then I'm like, you know what? No, I'm not going to bring this to the show. So I'll just tell you. I, okay. The Ice Storm is definitely a Thanksgiving movie, Dang. guys. It is. It is centrally focused around Thanksgiving and an ice storm that happens on Thanksgiving or the day after. But it's a Thanksgiving film for sure. And the ice storm needs to be moved into that realm of Thanksgiving movies. (laughs) There's a few. Get together with your family and watch the ice storm. (laughs) (laughs) Mom, come quick. Get the popcorn. I'm going to watch the ice storm. (laughs) Let's watch teenagers show their private parts to each other in the most awkward way possible. What a great film. Wow. And me the stuff. Uh, yeah. <laughs> if you've never seen The Ice Storm, folks, it's uh, not a family-friendly film. No. It's pretty boring, actually. I remembered. <laughs> I did remember, like, okay, I think Christina Ricci does, like, some weird shit with Elijah Wood or something. Or yeah, There's a lot of people in this movie. I mean, there's a huge cast. Mm-hmm. Joan Allen and Kevin Klein and Tobey Maguire and Elijah Wood and on and on and on. There's a lot of people in this film, and it's not bad, though. Even though I'm making fun of it, I would, 
I would recommend the Ice Storm. I mean, they don't make they don't make a lot of movies like this one anymore. It's very truly like the book. I never read the book, but I would imagine this is as close <laughs> to the book as you could get what because the there's fuck no are you talking about? <laughs> there's no fancy stuff it's just like it's it it watches like a book to me that's okay. i don't know how to describe it but it feels that way all right anything else you guys know what i mean you ever watch no. a movie you're like this is just like a book in a way a book i never read no i can't i, I can't i don't yeah. know that feeling is that like, is that like remember, reverse deja vu <laughs> remember the that band the book was better you got remember them i do yeah i, do I was just them. thinking of them uh just now so yeah there's the ice storm if you want to watch thanksgiving movies and i don't know what's going on here but i'm on to something and i hope mm. i'm the first to stumble upon this this is big i'm gonna claim this for myself on the internet it's not often that you can claim something on the internet as an original no but i believe there is i couldn't find the third movie but we could be in the midst of a possible ang lee thanksgiving trilogy because you have the ice storm in 97 and right. then in 2016 you have billy lynn's long <laughs> halftime walk it is absolutely it literally the whole movie billy lynn's takes place on thanksgiving yeah. at a football game so that's two i'm thinking we're gonna see one more thanksgiving movie from ang lee i think we are all right every time i guess that think? title i laugh out loud ridiculous uh, i, I know that one. it's so clumsy Dude, Billy I, I, Lynn's long halftime walk. Long, long I had, I had to Google walk. it to make sure because it's been a long time since I've seen it. But there is a uh, Thanksgiving scene in Brokeback Mountain. Mm. Oh, okay. Trilogy is complete. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Well, no, I won't say that. But there is a mm. scene that's interesting. I'll say that. But it's not. It has to be fully around Thanksgiving. So I yeah, can't quite give that life credit. Of I think we know that turkey movie. on that raft. <laughs> was that him <laughs> how, yeah how old oh, is ang lee is he gonna die soon is he like very old. is he uh, is he really oh shit well i don't want him to die i think it'll be a loss for film no. when ang lee passes i'm a, although he did do a terrible credible hulk i like hulk that's not good i keep trying to watch it <laughs> <laughs> keep trying to like it's, it if travis uh, it's not good then i'm gonna take your word for that um <laughs> So yeah, that was fun. It was fun to check in on those films, and you know, there's so much movie to see mm. in our life. Yeah, so much movie. The last thing, yeah, so much movie to see. And the last thing I want to do is miss out on a film that I wanted to see before I die. So I'm hoping yeah. uh, that I keep watching films properly. And by the way, uh, as I told Travis last week, I just wanted to mention to you, Eric, you watched the show, but yeah, I've never seen those first two Mad Maxes, man. They were awesome. And I just wanted to mention how awesome they were. Did, in you second didn't one watch, in particular. Uh, Beyond Thunderdome? I know. I still got to get to that one. That yeah. was my fault. I got. Do you wanna, I, got, this I told is Travis like I'd watch it last week. I, I swear it's a Mandela, Man, Mandela effect. Haven't you been like walking around doing like the master blaster voice for like the past 30 years? Is it somebody else? I guess not. No, no it's it's somebody else. else. Yeah. It's other people. It's probably me. Yeah, <laughs> uh, that'd be me. I've been swimming in raw sewage. All right, so yes, films are fun. <laughs> films are fun, and that's what we do here. Cinema Nine Podcast. Make oh, sure yeah. you guys email the show cinema nine pod at gmail dot com. Mm. We'll read your email on the air. If if you don't want us to, we won't. Of course, we. You gotta tell us that though. Yeah, we appreciate that. Yeah, we yeah, don't, we don't know. We're not minding you. I think that's implied in my opinion if you send an email to a podcast unless you say otherwise it is fair game for the show let us know if you don't want us to read it even like not even like on the air but even read it let us know if you don't even <laughs> want us to open the email yes the cinema nine confessional uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> Ooh, i smell a new segment i kind of hey. like what i'm hearing here oh bye <laughs> all right so there it is yeah check out movies and then tell us about them if you want to we'd love oh, to get your feedback shit. even if i watched you know, uh I watched No Time to Die, the latest James Bond movie. I forgot to talk about it. I still need to watch it was that. so boring. It was so uh, long. I really could long. not wait for it to end. That's, that's why I haven't watched uh, it. Isn't it like over three hours? Yeah. Then it ended, and I was I was so mad. And I'm not even a James Bond fan, but I was fucking pissed. You know, what? my first note for the green room is, uh, for green room is, fun fact, great movies can be an hour and a half long. Mm-hmm. Did you know uh, that? <laughs> they don't have to be four fucking hours uh, long. <laughs> nobody told that to the uh, Babylon crew, apparently. I think anybody they... anymore. Every movie's like yeah. two and a half hours lately. Well, <sighs> there was some huge news recently about Disney CEO Bob Iger has returned. Yeah. He's back. Mm. 
in the Disney chair, kicking out the guy he chose to replace him, by the way. Right. Uh, Wasn't weird. doing a bang-up job, Bob uh, <laughs> Chapek. <laughs> Chapek. Well, Bob Paycheck. Bob Paycheck. Bob <laughs> fucked Disney. Bob Paycheck? Yeah, the, the, the <laughs> man who <laughs> killed Paycheck. Disney in 10 months. Well, no, 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 you can't well, kill that beast, but uh, what well, didn't do a great job. It's an interesting time, though, because we got so many streaming options now, and they can't all last, and they're not all making money. There's a lot of losing going on, period. And I know the economy's in the shitter, blah, blah, blah. I get that. Mm. But it feels like there's going to be a... Whoosh, some type of swallowing up of somebody or something. There's going to be some merger that happens here. We're like, like I, I wouldn't be surprised. What if Netflix got bought by somebody or Disney absorbed a couple of streaming options? Yeah. I, I think well, something is going to happen here in the next year. It'll be interesting to see what that is. Disney Plus and Hulu are already linked up. I think it's only a matter of time until they're one service because it really doesn't make any sense for them to be two. Yeah, I was shocked to find out that Disney Plus is a loser financially because people love the, they want to see the new star wars the new marvel tv show so i thought a lot of people would be subscribing but i don't subscribe and i like watching those shows so that gets maybe i should just look at myself you're killing you're Realize killing it. that beast you're killing mickey mouse look what you look at yourself <laughs> they're gonna run out of business of you. Lies. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah that's exciting can't wait to see how that plays out and then we got oscar season starting to brew too guys so i'm really excited about that yeah, i think time to start uh, watching real movies like serious brooding movie mm -hmm. yeah i i'm uh i'm looking forward to maybe we'll probably have a segment talking about like oscar possibilities soon because we love talking that stuff it's always mm -hmm. entertaining and and we'd like to we want to do more fun segments too we did that when we were young as a show and we kind of got away from that a bit and if you guys like that or not let us know email the show cinema nine pod at gmail.com or just comment on this video on youtube we, there's youtube feed now where we could put a post and you guys can comment and we can basically it's like a I don't know, it's like a Facebook wall or any other type of feed where you can comment and interact. It's pretty cool. So. All right. Groovy ghoulies. Groovy ghoulies. Well, that's a great transition. Groovy ghoulies. Green room. It's time to get into today's selection. Eric Branchroom has selected 2015's Green Room, directed by Jeremy Solnier. And <laughs> actually, I don't know if it's I don't know if it's pronounced that way or not. I it's just told you. Yeah. Oh, it is? Okay. Yeah. Well, as a Govier, I took a chance. But <laughs> this is a newer film, and I, I have a lot to say about this film. So let's dive into it, but let's go back in time. Travis, this is a fairly recent film, so I'm sure you probably remember when you watched this a few years ago. I actually um, don't remember for sure. I mean, so I, I loved Blue Ruin when that came out. That was when... Now that wasn't Saulnier's first picture. It was his first picture was Murder Party, which I saw a little later. Um, but I I stumbled across Blue Ruin just because it you know it looked cool. It just looked like a good. I remember it had like a good trailer, so I watched that and loved it. Loved making Blair in it as well, and yeah. was fully committed to watching whatever the next movie that this guy did it was you know it's one of those things like this guy makes a good movie i will watch the next thing that he does so when green room came out i did i didn't catch it in theaters i'm not sure that i knew it was him until it was already out on like for streaming or whatever um but as soon as i learned it was him i watched it and i mean we'll see whether or not i think it holds up but since i saw it in 2016 and since i have routinely referred to it as one of the best movies of this century so we'll see if i still feel that way but it's not a movie i would have picked for this podcast because i was already very positive about how i felt about it hmm. okay interesting well eric you chose the film so give us the background yeah um look i knew how i was going to feel about the the movie myself this is kind of i kind of treated myself after being on my deathbed in hell uh i decided to treat myself and i just i i, I pulled a, I pulled a ragnarok i was like let's just pick a, let, let me just <laughs> choose a movie that i know i like that i just kind of want to talk about you got to do that sometimes keep it fresh on the show sure. um but yeah i i remember when i first saw it um after i'd seen blue ruin and uh, man when it ended i was just like this guy's so fucking awesome man like at least we have one guy i remember saying that out loud to myself at least we have one guy that knows what he's doing that I get to keep watching in, in the future here in modern Hollywood. Loved it. <laughs> just, just the one. 
At least, at least, <laughs> so, yeah. I, I tend to get depressed about current filmmakers. There's a handful I enjoy, but I'm like, we got another one. That's kind of what my mindset was. Like, okay, we got fresh meat here. Yeah. It's been a while. Oh. Yeah, he's it's been really, a while. He's really slow between pictures. He's he's yeah, got I, something in the works. It's going to be coming out, I think, this late this year or early next year or something. But it's solid four or five years between pictures. It's a long time. Yeah. Well. I, he did great work on. Uh, I love True Detective season three. It gets trash, but he did uh, many of the episodes. I thought the whole Ooh, season. I didn't watch it. I still don't watch that. What's the Jeffrey Wright movie? I always forget the name of this one. Into hold the, the dark. dark. Some, hold the dark. Yeah, hold the dark. Some really yeah, cool that was sequences. good. That was good. Hmm. My least favorite. I, of his. Yeah. Oh well, you're entitled to your opinion. You know that, I right? Have, I have opinions. <laughs> I'm allowed to have them. You can't take. Yeah, them Mike. Even in West Virginia. Yeah, Even in West Virginia, here. you have opinions? That's allowed? That's amazing. I, I carry them with me wherever I go, Michael. <laughs> then I carry it with me like uh, my daddy did. Because uh, I'm living the dream. That Wait a minute. Oh, that's a, that's in the ice storm. That song is in the is ice it? storm in a scene Holy between shit. Toby Come Maguire and Christina circle. Ricci. That's okay. a fact. Uh, Travis, as far as my yeah first experience, I remember the Blue Ruin hype. Everybody was talking about Blue Ruin when it came out. And so I watched that. And I remember saying, wow, I'm glad I watched that. It's an excellent yeah, film. It is. And then when Green Room came out, there was a ton of hype. This particular our friend group, people I knew, like, oh, man, Green Room, we got to see this in the theater. And Brian Madison, you're out there. Shout out to you, buddy. Totally blew it on the theater viewing. And then when it came to streaming or whatever the fuck it is at that time, uh, we had uh, made plans to watch Green Room together, me and him, for literally like six to seven months. We were both <laughs> waiting to see it because we both wanted to watch it together. Aww. And you know, unfortunately, I was, you know, I was addicted to opioids. It got in the way a little bit, and I just wasn't very reliable. So Brian finally had to see the film on his own, and I don't blame you, Brian. And I only wish that I could have come through for you back then. But I finally watched it a few years later. I think I watched this for the first time about three years ago. And I remember being like, whoa, man, this is intense. It's not an easy watch. I do recall that. And uh, it was good at the time. So now here we are. I haven't watched it since. And mm -hmm. now we're going to talk about that. But All right. that's my experience with Green Room. Isn't that fun? It is fun. Thank you for sharing us, us with that. This. I share you with the world every week. Word. I love sharing you guys. I love, I love your live, live show. I know about you guys. Hey! <laughs> 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 Hey, here we go. This is for my dad. This is Tim Govier laugh. <laughs> Whoa. That's my dad's verbatim he laugh. That's for you, Tim. Laugh. <laughs> Whoa. He does like this. <laughs> it's funny. It's, I don't know how he does it. I can't really recreate it. It's close, so. Dad, let me know if I was close. I love you, Dad. That was a tribute to you. All right, so uh, review on this movie. I assume that people like this because Saulnier's got a lot of rep, right? Yeah. So I'm saying this is sure. a, probably at least like a 7-3. Yeah, I'm going to say it, it breaks the seven barrier, um, but I don't know that everyone has the same esteem as uh, myself or perhaps you guys. I, I'll, I'll say 7 1. Uh, Got to be at least 7 0. Oh. 7 0? Oh? Okay. Well, actual retail price on the movie Green Room is 7.0. Oh, you nailed it. Well wow. done, Eric. Okay. All right. You win. Right? Hey, what um, do I win? The button. Uh, our admiration, my respect, at least. I can oh, thank that. you. Thank you. Finally. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> <laughs> validation. Sweet, sweet validation. Uh, <laughs> it's got 125,000 people on it, so it's not like a tiny Lee. It's yeah. well-reviewed. It's well-rated. Well That's a solid rating. Yeah. For Like, this is... I wouldn't think a lot of people would see this film hmm. just because... You're wrong. I mean, it's A24, so maybe I'm... Uh, giving it too much of like an indie feel like, oh, no one's seen Green Room. It's a great movie, but nobody's seen it. So like clearly I was wrong, Travis. Mm. Well, mm, were you? Because I think uh, on its $5 million budget, it made like three. So it lost oh, really? money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's amazing. That's not uh, a lot of money at all for, for theaters. So, You know, oh. I, I remember feeling like I should have seen it in theaters. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. I wish mm -hmm. I had. Ah. I just told my story about I wish I had. Yeah, so that is yeah. interesting. That is odd. Mm. So Green Room's got the 7.0 on IMDb, a 90% from the critics, which is even much higher. Wow. And then 
75 from the audience. So 15% Ooh. disparity between the critics and the people who watch this film. But, you know, you got Patrick Stewart. You got the dearly departed Anton Yelkin. So sad uh, that he passed away. Yep. Um, really, really miss him. I really liked all a lot of his work. Uh, Alpha Dog, uh, Charlie Tom. Bartlett even. It's kind of a... Oh, yeah. I forgot about that one. That was a good one. I haven't seen that since I saw it the first time. Odd Thomas. Oh, I haven't seen that one. Uh, one. Only Lovers Left Alive. I fucking love that movie. He was great in it. Yeah, he was good in that. I mean, he was was a a true natural talent. I mean, the kid just had a very authentic, believable, and varied delivery. He didn't just like show up and do the same thing over and over again, but he also... He, he wasn't like trying to break the mold and trying to like, how, how weird can I get? Like he wasn't trying exactly. to show off. He had a very, he was just a really reliable and professional uh, actor from a really young age on. Yeah. Real I, you, you nailed it. He, he wasn't trying too hard. He was just, yeah. a, he had natural kind of quiet charisma that, that worked. That's it. Yeah. And he got to do big budget. He was Star Trek. He got to play. Yeah. Uh, He's fucking, uh, the, what's his nuts? Russian guy. Tarkovsky. Just throw out a Russian name. Dostoevsky. Yeah. He played Vladimir Putin, right? Uh, <laughs> just a second. Yeah. Running out. Uh, I forget. <laughs> you get in a car. You turn on Vladimir oh, Putin's uh, speech. Uh, <laughs> look uh also by the way third time and hopefully i don't have to say this again but there's also a dostoevsky reference in the ice storm there's a scene about oh, really? it all That's right so great. there is <laughs> what a shocker wow. Ooh, wow. ice storm covers the whole gamut of popular culture it's strange <laughs> uh, so review wise like i said the critics loved it and this is a more recently reviewed film so we're not going to have some of our old-timey faves no, like ebes yeah, oh, Destin. It'd be nice to have Destin pop in on this one. I'm looking around just for the hell of it. Maybe there's a miracle. Uh, but when, was, when did Destin stop reviewing, roughly, Travis? You seem to have a handle on that. Oh, well, when he started working for the Obama administration, which I think was around either 08 or I think I think it was actually after the... I think it was 2010. Oh, okay. I don't see him in here, so he didn't come back. If he was still working, he was busy. So let's go. How about this one? Uh, Nick Shager from Esquire. You guys heard of Esquire? Guys- I have. It's a it's a I've magazine. Looked- Remember that magazine, Esquire? <laughs> <laughs> I've read, I do. Yeah, like glossy magazine. Remember magazines <laughs> on your mother's dining room table? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Red Book, Esquire, good times. Uh, the most hardcore film of the year, Green Room, is ninety five minutes of pure, unbridled mosh pit cinema. Okay, mosh pit yeah. cinema. Never mosh know. pit yeah. cinema. It's there's not a lot of punk rock movies, but this is yeah. at the top of the list. Hell yeah, I want to. Yeah, I want to talk more about that momentarily. But we got Bill Goody Coons checking in. Oh, yes, Goody Coons. All right, Bill Goody Coons from the Arizona oh, Republic on April twenty eighth, twenty sixteen. He said the following: Fear brings out the truth, even in would be punks, and there is a lot of fear in Green Room. Okay. Thank you, Bill. Thanks, Bill. <laughs> a lot of fear. I don't know if he was trying to be clever or like, I don't know. It was uh, understated. I'll say that. Uh, Ty Burr of the Boston Globe said, the setup is as elemental as a campfire story, but Green Room dresses it anew. <laughs> a campfire story. Dresses it anew. So like, okay. so it's a yeah, like it, it's a tale that's been told many times before, but yet Green Room is telling it in a new way, in a refreshing way. I guess. I mean, I, I think that's true. It, it is an extremely basic story. Yeah, which is partly uh, why it works. Show we'll be talking okay. a lot about Deliverance today, of incredible movie. Insomnia does kind of remind me of John Borman, even in other ways aside from that film. But this movie Ooh. also reminded me of uh, Judgment Night quite <laughs> quite oh. a bit, which we covered uh, <laughs> yeah. in an early episode. Really fun movie. That's and there's funny. such a there's such an interesting difference between these two because Judgment Night is so '90s. It's so like popcorn in the theater, dumb and fun. Whereas yeah. this kind of has the same approach, but it's so like 2015, mumbly, quiet. Mm-hmm. 
not really trying to entertain you so much as to instill you with a sense of of, an an unpenetrable dread so yeah for for uh for uh two similar plot mechanics it's so interesting how what time does to survival horror Hmm. well while we're on the (laughs) subject of other uh, movies that made us think of the movie it made me think of is well the opening not the whole movie but it made me think of the opening of 2004's dawn of the dead the dawn of the dead remake um because i love a movie where people are just living their ordinary life and just doing their ordinary thing and then this switch gets flipped and you're like you're in instant survival mode and and mm. dawn of the dead you know it starts off where she's like in bed and all of a sudden she has to fight a fucking zombie it goes from like <laughs> zero to a hundred like that and that's pretty much what happens here if yeah. if if they had not left the phone in the green room uh, the, there's no movie. They just go on with their life, and it's and it's and it's over. But because this one thing, they have to go back, and then all of a sudden, it just rapidly escalates, and where suddenly, you know, these normal people are like, "I have to fight for my life now." Holy shit! One minute, suddenly... siphoning gas. The next. <laughs> Welcome to hell. Your har- your hands hanging off your arm. Uh, come, there, this movie has a. <laughs> ton of reviews by the way this is the record for most reviews maybe because it's newer there's more online reviews i just yeah. want to get a couple more real quick uh chris nashawati nashawati chris nashawati of entertainment weekly a very popular rag says rag. what makes green room more than just a giddy gory slice of gonzo b movie mayhem is both its ace cast and the vice tightening mastery of the man pulling the strings behind the camera yeah and then in response, we got. I haven't given a negative review, so here's a negative one. This one's from Carvey S. Carton of CompuServe. <laughs> CompuServe? Why yeah. get that name again? Carvey Carton? <laughs> CompuServe. Harvey S. Carton from CompuServe on April 11th, 2016 said the following. <laughs> a slasher pick that fails on most levels. Production values, music, dialogue, performance, clarity of purpose, C-. Ooh. Harvey, it's always so Not- funny how people can get the just like we watched that we watched the same movie and that's what he came up with. Weird, right? Harvey. That's why critics are just I mean, we read them just for the hell of it, just to kind of like give you guys a sense of what random people said. Nobody's right or wrong ever on a film. It's just fascinating. I totally agree with you, Travis. Last one. This is also a bogus splat. This is from Donald J. Levitt of Real Talk Movie Reviews. Good or bad depends on whether one cares to watch such raw, hysterical darkness and whether it is worth watching. Against the tide, this voice crying in the wilderness says, no, it isn't. So I think that's an interesting one to <laughs> oh. kind of transition off of just because yeah, this is nope. a tough watch. That, that guy did everything but describe himself as like, uh, you know, I, I run against the grain, you know, I, I go against the tide. <laughs> You know, I'm a real, I'm an iconic, an iconoclast, you know? Well, then wouldn't he be like a DIY punker that would love this movie? Because right. that's what you think. No, the, yeah. the problem is that other people like the movie. So he had to make sure everyone knew that he was. Uh, right. Know? Okay. Now I see the point of view. But yeah, this is, a, this is a movie about a punk rock band, a real DIY, the ultimate spirit of true yeah. punk, not your pop mm-hmm. punk, not your Blink-182s, your green days. We're talking about, I mean, hell, like beyond punk, punk, hardcore, post-hardcore. This oh, is yeah. a band. Punk. That really, tr- yes, yes. And Travis, I, but gutter punk, but not like uh, gutter mouth, you know, like they're very serious too. Like they're gutter punk, but oh, they have hardcore. a message like Dead Kennedys S type yeah. stuff. Well, I mean, when they are being interviewed and they, I think it's when they're being interviewed and they say that they don't have a social media presence because they want to limit how many shows they play and they don't want hits and they deliberately don't release their stuff like in albums. They release them on like pressed seven inches of stuff, deliberately keeping their fan base down, which we hear their music. I don't know how big of a fan base are realistically going to get, but they're actively working again. Like they're like these hardcore artists that are actively yeah. working against uh capitalism or like profiting off of their life they're just trying to live the most basic scrounge through existence they can so that they can have the the live music experience which is cool i mean like yeah. that's fucking cool is it it's i mean it's something that obviously someone their age is going to be like the last age of, that you're going to be able to do that at because they're like mid-20s and eventually you're going to be like, well, I like having showers and sleeping in beds. Um, <laughs> <but> <laughs> it's pretty cool. Wow. He does say 
uh, in the interview, Anton Yelkin's character does say that, you know, nobody wants to starve. So he does say that, but yeah. the way he describes the live experience and how mm -hmm. uh, precious it is, how priceless it is, it was, it's a small part of the film, but it was really beautiful because the world we live in today with social media and the energy that you cannot replicate from a live show online. You can never do that. Even if you watch a show online, you'd be like, oh, that was cool to see that. You would never be able to get the same response. Like, we're people don't know us, you know, at least me and Travis. I mean, we grew up punk rock, we were really into bands like this. I mean, maybe not this dirty for me, more like. But like the punk rock ethos and the the loyalty and all, all the friendship and like hey you know folk authority and that kind of stuff that was a big part of a uh, adolescent experience and it reminded me of that and this movie you know strange way for all that it does takes me <laughs> into a nostalgic trip for a while until it does go in a different direction. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Um... Um, I mean, obviously, I don't love NSBL, but I do love the the pit sequence at the club, like the march, mm. like when they actually yeah. the pit is going on and everything fucking slows down. Yep, like that may seem counteractive to what's happening, but I mean, I'm no prude. I've been in plenty of mosh pits and had a fucking great time. That is kind of the sense that you get when you're in a pit. You just kind of in unison with everyone, and time yeah. slows down, and it's a very kind of beautiful thing, as brutal as it is. And, so and in punk, it's a positive that. thing. It's not mm -hmm. like going to a Nine Inch Nails or back oh, sure. in the day where people yeah. want you know Pantera. Let's fuck each other up in a punk exactly. rock pit. It was much more like, oh, make sure we pick people up. We don't mm -hmm. want people to get trampled. Mm -hmm. And it's also in the film. It's the last time that they're together playing live. Where they're uh, going to be able to create that yeah. experience together, and they're connecting with an audience that they kind of hate, um, they, that they clearly <laughs> hate. I mean, you know, like, but like, even still, they're, they'd rather because they're not doing it for the audience; they're doing it for themselves. And, and it's also similar to the scene we get of them like um, hanging out by the river or by the fire the night before, like their last night alive together. I think I think that we're that's where we get that stuff. Okay, yeah. So this is what I want to talk about. Then we just talked about their ethos and their spirit. Very, you know, do it yourself. Yeah. And we're not going to kowtow. But then they do kowtow for the money to do this show. The guy doesn't really lie about what they're about. The guy who, you know, he obviously sets them up originally to this shithole place. Oh, my God. Yeah, I, have, I have played like a lunch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And like mm -hmm. like in the bowling alley once, like in the middle mm -hmm. of the fucking day when they're when they're playing like the lunch at the fucking Mexican room, I'm like, it made me think of that. And that is just the worst show you can play. In the middle of the day in a yeah. restaurant, like that is not I don't care how poker lounge you, you are. It's just stupid. <laughs> yeah, but they so the point is that three hundred fifty bucks they're gonna get paid, and they got screwed on that lunch show, which they made six dollars and eighty seven cents or whatever. So then they play for the money, knowing that, hey, don't talk politics with these people. They're clearly so right wing that they're they think they're on the nah, left or ultra yeah, it's <laughs> ridiculous. It's strange. It's strange that they would do. I don't know. I I, I don't want to well, nitpick here, but it's a no, little bit of a strange choice. I think I think that gets it. it um, I think it was Bill Goody uh review there. There is this un peeling of their uh pretense because there is there is pretense to what these guys do i mean when they're being interviewed with their last desert island uh you know with their favorite desert island band is they say all these different bands but when they think they're about to die then they're talking about prince and simon and garfunkel uh i don't care how punk rock you are it's hard to sound punk rock and like beg for the police to come but they're begging for the police to come yeah. through most of the movie uh they you know on one hand yeah they're sticking to this diy ethos but on the other hand they're also kids and human and americans and just kind of functioning in society and you know they who they want to be and who they actually are and who they pretend to be that stuff kind of gets mm. uh it, it's not it's not super obvious in the movie i think that it, like we're not beating about the head with this issue but you you do see that yeah they're they're still very much just people <laughs> and oh, um early. i mean they're, they're also uh, um they're also very fluid i mean their intention is to just get enough money to go to the next gig if yeah. they didn't want to play and open up for or uh cow catcher whoever these who are these fucking guys no, no, not cow catcher i they, they, they like... wouldn't <laughs> i mean the thing i like about the band is that i mean they're true artists like art art doesn't have to appreciate its audience even like its audience yeah the art is the art uh so th they're seeing this as uh an opportunity to just express themselves they're probably even fucking getting off on it which is kind of cool 
Uh, Dragon yeah. Movie Guy says, haven't seen this flick. Captain Picard oh, and Chekhov right. in the same movie. Well done. Didn't well even done, think of Dragon that movie. Great connection. Yes. Didn't think about it. <laughs> okay, yeah. So, good Lord. There's so much to talk about this film. We got to get moving here. But, uh, yeah, so... I want to talk about this right now because we can talk okay. about more performances and the individuals. It's a great cast and sure. beautifully directed film. Looks great. All of it. Uh, Patrick Stewart is a heavy hitter, sure, but... Uh, why would you want to watch this movie again if you've seen it before? <laughs> oh, I, I've watched this movie many times. Many times. <laughs> yeah. I've, okay. I've, please. Um, yeah. Well, for, for, for one, it's it's a it's a quick and dirty hour and a half. It is relentless. There is not for me. There is not a, a, a lull. Um, that, you know, there is a, a couple moments in the first half hour where they're kind of being introduced and stuff. But once the movie gets going, it's 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 off on a tear, and it is tense. And it is uh, entertaining. It is hardcore. And I've seen this movie probably, I don't know, eight or nine times now. And I still get surprised by it. You know, the, 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 there's moments where I'm like, shit. Like when the drummer comes through the window and, and like immediately starts getting stabbed. I'm like, oh, no. Mm. Every time this bums me out because he's like the brawler. He's the one who's going to get him through it. And he gets like relentlessly mauled, like for no good reason, you know. It's uh, so yeah. There's, a, I think that there's just a lot that's happening in this movie. Even watching it this time, I, I picked up on a lot more dialogue, particularly between uh, Darcy, you know, the, the um, character played by Patty. Patrick Stewart, and Macon Blair's character Gabe. There's a lot of uh, conversations between these guys, those guys that really um, contextualize what's going on behind the scenes of the movie, like of, of those characters um that i didn't didn't pick up on as much before that so I, I i get more out of it every time i watch it so yeah why wouldn't i watch it again my question for you is why wouldn't you watch this again <laughs> i'm surprised uh you watch it so many times especially with the dog violence in this film well Ooh. no dogs die in this movie there's one dog that gets shot but we don't see it die right i'm not saying they die it's dog violence well dog killing people i can handle that it's when people kill dogs <laughs> i get upset Hmm. <laughs> And even that dog came back to his master oh, after Kujo. he was already dead. Oh, yeah. sad was that. Does that get you emotional? I mean, that's... Well, no, because it's a Nazi, so I'm glad that the Nazi's oh. dead. <laughs> I, I, it, Nazi it definitely... punks, fuck off! <laughs> Which, that's the only... Like, I almost don't buy it. You know what I mean? Like, if you're going to be that... I, I almost don't buy that they would do that, that they play that song in this venue. But if they do play this song in the, in the venue, I don't buy that they don't have people come up and beat the shit out of them on stage while they're playing it. It's one of my few yeah. great the movie. Yeah, that's it's a hardcore uh, uh, Eric, I'm sorry. I know I want to get you in on this. I just you think about the cultivated uh, group that they have there of these racist Nazis. bigots who have yeah, yeah, they're Nazis. They're full on. They are truly white supremacists. It's not just like mm. a term that gets thrown around. These people have been created by Darcy who's also selling heroin too. So you got a whole mm. trade based around this culture and I actually thought, Eric, that would so many people be so willing to murder? Like, there's a lot of people who are just ready. Murder is a big deal, if you think about it. If you think about the realism of this film, which this film does a really, I think this film really tries to be authentic and real and put you in a real world. But there's a lot of people who are wearing red laces and ready to murder. And <laughs> is that, I don't know. It's like, I don't think, that, and, and they're also not. I mean, they're white people, so like, if you want to give the argument like, oh, uh, they were Jews or they were from a different culture that they would hate and want to kill a lot more, they're not that either. So, does that bother you at all, or who cares? No, um, I think Darcy's when Darcy calls them, he what does he say? He mumble. I this dude, I haven't put, put the cl closed captions on in record time for this one. Everyone fucking mumbles. It's mumble gore. <laughs> um, but when yes, Darcy talks about what they're doing there is not just like they're not they're not a venue. I mean, it's a movement. Uh, the most first and foremost here is uh, their movement, their mm -hmm. ideology and their agenda that they have. And that being said, the the uh, the folks still are into music. So I don't get I don't get surprised when the people are kind of starting to feel it yeah. uh, just because they 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 like hard fucking black metal. Um, I Mm -hmm. I dig that. Um, but what we got here, dude, you, you talk about multiple viewings. I almost watched it again. Right, I'm showing my cards when it, when it was over. You, when, when you have an, uh, a filmmaker that can set these types of stakes, uh, 
and then it, for me sitting back and trying and then trying to figure out how the fuck are they going to get out of this situation? That's why I keep coming back. And like Travis said, I, I was surprised at how much I had forgotten about this movie. They set something up and then they, they, they knock out, knock it out with a solution. And it's so, it, it's mind boggling how good of strategists these, the band is that kind of surprised me kind of in a weird way. Like everybody there is fully equipped to do battle against a horde of Nazis. I would be fucked. I would be the first guy to die here. I, I think it takes them a little while to like accept the reality of it. Like it, since they have that, sustained period of like face off where the bouncer has a gun on them i think that and then once he, um pat the basis mm -hmm. hand gets hacked mm -hmm. they're able like okay this is real they're really trying to kill us here but to get to get to your question mike um this is not the first time they've killed right part of the reason um that darcy is so excited about this all happening because he learns that daniel tadpole's cousin has smuggled out a baseball bat that he's wrapped up in plastic that presumably has probably Darcy's fingerprints or DNA or something on it, but it's like a murder weapon. They've murdered before and now they're being asked to murder for the, the, mm -hmm. to save their leader and their and their home. So I don't I mm -hmm. it doesn't surprise me that they that they're willing to kill for this. And also dogs uh, trained dogs kill two of the people of the of the of the band. It's really only I think six or seven maybe eight neo-nazis that are actually actively trying to kill them mm. um it's just the circumstances that makes it seem like there's more mm. okay that's, that's fair, fair. Yeah. and th those two guys towards the end they're not very good at it either so no. <laughs> I mean, no, they're not all like trained killers they are truly podunk dudes who are being picked up into this group and they're being asked to do th things which by the way if Darcy, the Patrick Stewart character, he is yeah. so organized. He is thinking about everything. He seems to have an answer and a plan, thinking ahead and ahead and ahead. Yeah. And then he relies on these guys towards the end, and they take mm. off. Eh, it seems like yeah. that's a little weak, but yeah, yeah. it is. It is a little weak. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm not going to rip the movie to shreds for that stuff. I just, I just like to talk character motivation. But I also, you know, this. I've said this many times. Travis knows this for sure. That I've talked about the. Uh, the era of Dom Hall Gleason for a minute there. He was in every movie for like two years. <laughs> sure. This. This was the era of Imogen Poots. She was in everything for like two years during this time from 2014 to 2016, 17. It's crazy. Well, where'd I she mean, go? She didn't, she didn't go anywhere. She, she was in Vivarium a couple of years ago. She was in yeah, The Father. Um, she's been acting. And I think that that woman's going to win an Academy Award someday. I think that she's <gasps> really, really good. Wow. I, I think that she is a solid actor. I really do. Okay. Like, Very mumbly. I'm not against like, her at all. I, yeah. There's a there's a scene in there where she I had to rewind it like three times because I could not fucking hear what anyone was saying. <laughs> um, someone yeah. gets on her case about why she's with cow cow catcher and she tries to explain her relationships her relationships with a you know this N NSL yeah this uh, band and I I think she talks about um you know what I'm talking about Travis when, when she, she mentions she been, very briefly about she had been hurt her, by other people. Right. By other people that yeah, weren't white, not, I think she right. says. And then so. Pat responds with, well, what, what about tonight? Do we have a white people problem tonight? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's really um, and it's off screen. It's like yeah, there's it's a conversation screen. taking place off screen. It, it is. Yeah, it's I know it's a dress, but I mean, she's a human being in a tor terrible situation. So I'm not going to stop and be like, wait, is this is this chicken Nazi? <laughs> and well, I, get so the feeling, I get the feeling that she's more like friends with Emily and mm -hmm. Emily has fallen into this circle by dating this guy Worm, mm -hmm. and and she's yeah. so I think that she's only gotten into all this because of right. Emily. Mm -hmm. But she's definitely familiar enough with them because she gives them a lot of like, hey, they're gonna kill you. They've got guns. She definitely yeah. has been around long yeah. enough to know yeah. the score here. Yeah. And Eric, I totally agree with you. I I rewinded one part four times, <laughs> four times because the the dog master, the guy, the dog yeah. Little, yeah. You know, leader. Yeah, I couldn't figure out what he said when he gives his dog a shot and he says something about like, make sure the the dog have meat teeth. Make just make sure the dog has meat you want teeth. Want the dog to die with meat in his teeth? Is that I couldn't hear that clearly. Yeah. I was talking oh, about yeah, meat yeah. teeth. Yeah. I, 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 did, I, I tried so teeth. hard. I I listened to it one time and I caught that. Yeah, he he said that because he was talking about the dog that got shot. Um, yeah, because mm -hmm. Max, uh, uh, what's her name's character, um, Al Aaliyah Shawcat's character, she mm -hmm. fires up the shotgun and like gr and grazes the dog that kills her, um, and and so that dog's dying, and he's gonna take that dog back up the road, and um, 
he's saying he's saying bring the bodies back so that my you know before he dies he can dine on human flesh one more <laughs> okay. time great well yeah. it just goes to my point yes I, I didn't have subtitles for this one so i had some hard times i had some challenges but yeah <laughs> but do you need them i mean there's there's so much happening in this movie and so much of it is like this visceral uh, image based stuff. I mean, it's not like it's, it's, it's not I a very convergent movie. Well, I, I don't know that it matters necessarily because, like I said, I was picking up all kinds of stuff this viewing that I hadn't learned before and paying close attention, like as to the goings ons of the Nazis and all that. And having not known that stuff before, I still thoroughly enjoyed the movie and watched it over and over again before and thought it was great. So, I mean, I, I don't think it necessarily greatly detracts from the viewing experience if you don't know that the guy wants his dog to have teeth in his mouth with meat in it <laughs> yes it doesn't detract from it necessarily it is mildly annoying for me and i think eric agrees because there's also a lot of background that we can learn that's yes it's a visceral experience mm. but there's so much to this operation and mm. so i'm really paying attention when patrick stewart is talking to any of his minions because like, i want to pick things up because i yeah. i don't know why but I am really enthralled by th what's going on there. Like Solnay's script and the movie really make me fascinated by what's the details here? Yes, they're white supremacists. I get that. That's the easy part. But what are they doing? Uh, why do they do this? I'm trying Heroin, to pick up Frank. any detail I can. Heroin, Frank. Yes. But that's yeah. why I care to know and hear every line that I possibly can. <laughs> it wasn't Tenet. I mean, you could at least hear some of it. <laughs> no, it was not Tenet. That's fair. I really like... Um... <laughs> Making Blair in the story, uh, he's such like a very natural actor. He's like a, um, he's got like Giamatti qualities and stuff. Yeah. I'd, I'd love to see him in more le leading roles. I really like the picture he did with uh, Melanie Linsky. Um, mm -hmm. But in, in here, man, I like the way the character is written. I've got no problems with his character, but when him and Darcy interact. I did not see how Darcy does not pick up on this guy's lack of allegiance to everything that's going on. You take one look at his face and he is very wishy-washy about everything that's going on. Yeah. And I also mm. didn't really understand why he's treating, uh, making Blair's character like his right hand man, but then he gives him his red laces during all of this. I was like, wait a minute. I thought this was yeah. like your guy. And, but he's yeah. actually well, not going to rewind it. Then you'll hear him be like, well, we're on the red laces already. Now it's just, uh, uh, just right. No, yeah. No, no, I caught that. But I mean, like, but like he's, he, he, you get the feeling that he's one of the, like, he's one of the people that makes the, the, the machine hum. Mm -hmm. He's a major, yeah. he's a major character in their organization. I thought and he was his son, possibly. I'm like, yeah. oh, is this, is his son? Yeah. I mean, to me, I, he seems like the second in command. Mm -hmm. And yes. that the second in command does not have red laces seemed, seemed weird to me. Um, cause otherwise who is the second in command, the dog master guy, not worm. It's not worm. Hmm. Um, you know, worm is just, uh, he's, he's, he's like, just, he, um, he almost seems like a, like a, like a peripheral character. Almost. He seems like he's like a true believer, but not really a big part of the organization necessarily. <laughs> when he asked, what's the name of your second to last song oh, you played? So I mean, that is oh, so intense so and he's so yeah. locked in on it. That, that guy's brief, but that guy's. Awesome. That was well done, Scary. man. The, Dude, and that it moved. The movie ends with him just eating fucking noodles. Yes, the oh, other guy is all me. like OD'd or whatever. <laughs> yeah, and like he yep. gets away completely. Like no matter who you kill here, like the, the ideology continues. This mm. kind of murderous person is still out there. Tadpoles vacuuming his apartment. You know, mm. um, people just go on. <laughs> people, yeah. You know what? The fact that Patrick Stewart's in this movie, it doesn't. To me, it doesn't really add or detract. Like, he just kind of fits right in, which I think is a big credit to Patrick Stewart because he's such a famous yeah. actor and person and celebrity that we know for all his yeah. fame and his roles over the years. But he could he did such a great job of this because he blends in. Yes, he's a leader. He's Darcy who runs the show. But I'm not ever thinking while I'm watching this movie like, Oh, that's Patrick Stewart. God, he's Not so once. good at this film. He's really yeah. good, but like he is just one of the many pieces in this machine that runs very, very smoothly. Yeah, no, I Not agree. Once. Yeah. And and going back to what I was saying before about, you know, they make this in the 90s and like the Darcy character is going to be cracking jokes and you're almost going to love to hate him. <laughs> None yeah. of that here. Completely stripped of any type of like enjoyable charisma, just down to business operations, which makes him more menacing. Mm. And I love the the last line that that uh, Anton Yelchin says to him. You were so scary 
in the yeah. at, at night and that and that he goes to like run away but also wants to fight back uh patrick stewart's character mm -hmm. this awesome this like ignoble ending of him you know getting like trying to turn around to fire off a shot mm -hmm. and, he, and he gets one shot off it's not even close really mm -hmm. and then that shot in the head it's he doesn't get like this big victorious mm -hmm. slow motion you know hail of bullets ending it's very dry and okay now now it's over Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, this where were where were the let's go Brandon chance in this film? <laughs> yes, that would have been if this was a movie in 2021. That would have been very apropos, Dragon Movie Guy, no doubt about it. <laughs> also, in reference to what I said about Imogene, apparently she already has 93 screen credits. So sorry about that. Yeah, she's my bad. Heavily working. I I feel like I apologize. Just missed it. Yeah, yeah, that's my fault. Poots. Sorry, Poots. That's sorry, my bad. Yeah. Pretty pants. Holy crap, man. Time is flowing by and there's still, there's still more to talk about. So come on, hit me. Give me the big hits here. Come on, guys. Well, we haven't talked about the other band members very much. Um, how do we feel about those performances? I feel like uh, they're very realistic characters. They're they're unique in their own right. They're all... And then, and then their deaths are so... It's very... They have these very tragic deaths. It, it, it also kind of made me think... Especially Tiger. Especially Tiger. Mm. Mm. Um, no, actually, I think that uh, I think that the drummer had the most grisly death because he gets stabbed multiple times and they just let him bleed out slowly oh, so that God. his time of death is later I on. Mean, so he suffers so more. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, but I get awful. the idea that Tiger's, they show you that he's still alive while this dog's just mowing yeah. on his neck. Like, he's not he's dead. The That's the worst part about it. And he's looking yeah. at the shotgun. He can't do anything about it. Oh. Um, yeah, that is pretty brutal. Dang. And I actually was thinking, you know, I, I've, I've said, I've, I've said kind of, some, I've said some kind of mixed things about Ty West movies on our podcast before, but I do respect Ty West, and I, and I think that he has had a really positive impact in horror filmmaking. <laughs> Although I, I don't know that I agree that this is a horror movie. That's a separate conversation. But I do really like that we get a lot of time with these characters and learn to care about them before we watch them get mutilated and killed. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do. That's fair. And. The other band members are awesome. I guess originally they were all supposed to be dudes, but Aaliyah Shulkett got cast, and then Saul Nays like, "Oh yeah, let's let's change this up." And that's Better great cast. that there's a woman. Yeah, yeah, it's a big. I think it's a great improvement to the story because it provides oh, this. Like yeah, it provides this. Um, you know, this balance within the band. It's not about gender roles. It just gives another example to give you an aspect and understanding of where they come from and why they do what they do. Yeah. And it's by the, the way, the seediest yeah. show location you've ever been to. Oh, the seediest uh, show location that we, well, I mean, I don't want to say disparaging things, but a very important venue in Flint, Michigan uh, in its early days. So I won't name it, but early on had some kind of <laughs> grimy places. Uh, that, that, the local? That <laughs> the first God place you bring up, we, we were getting that dropped that off at, at 14 years old. <laughs> and that's number one. That place. Don't get me wrong. I love the Flint local. Um, Flint local 432. That Oddly enough, they moved it, but it still existed in Flint as of last year, which was really yeah. bizarre to me. When I worked downtown there last year, or about a year and a half ago, I walked around the block and I'm like, oh, this is strange. It still exists. And yeah. That's amazing to me because the old building it was in. I got like condemned. The floor would cave in. It was not. It was ready to go. That place was falling apart. But it was a dingy dive. But we loved it. We yeah. did. Yeah. Yes, that's what that makes me think of for sure. And by the way, I made an error. I have to correct immediately. The ninety-three credits here was not about poots. Oh, it's actually, about one of my. I, I'm going to say this now. Uh, one of my favorite actresses, Aaliyah Shawcott. Oh. She's another talented actress, says Dragon Movie Guy, that pops up in great flicks, but never quite gets famous enough to headline films. She's in Search Party, Ruby Sparks, The Runaways, and a Pee Wee Herman movie. Yes, she's had a great career. She's known for Arrested Development, most likely, but Aaliyah Shockett has been everywhere. She's ubiquitous now, really. Like any yeah. indie movie, she's probably in it over the last 15 years. She was really good on uh, The Old Man with Jeff Bridges on, on Hulu as well. Oh, um, but here's a question for you guys um, Why doesn't the bass player's wound bleed? If your um, hand is severed at the wrist, yes. how easily can you duct tape that up? I like, thought about that the like, whole movie, why, dude. Why is this guy conscious right now? Like yeah. they overdid it. They overdid it. Like having like a few slashes makes sense, but like that his hand is Shot, tough is, is hanging by a thread means that he would bleed out mm, without a tourniquet. There, what 
five minutes. I mean, it's it's a yeah. huge blunder. They need yes. to at least give him a tourniquet yeah. to make for it to even the, make sense. They just the the nerves, him. the nerves are fucked. There's no way he's doing any of the stuff he does for the re- remainder of the film. <laughs> like, yeah, he's not gonna stay up all night. <laughs> let, yeah. let, let alone do the rest of that shit. They over here, here, brother. Yeah, it looked great, but the, but there was no blood, and that doesn't make any sense. And uh, it just. It just, it was too much. It, 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 they fucked up there, unfortunately. <laughs> I, I think it's a movie of being yeah. super mumbly and like everyone's just like droning on their lines, but maybe <laughs> it's the blood loss situation. And I'm uh, overlooking the fact that like they're all about to die. There's so much blood loss that they're just talking like, uh, and they are in uh, shock. I mean, like, there's, there, there is that moment where after, um, after Elias Shawkat's character gets killed and, and he says that he, where they go back to the green room and Pat says to Amber, like, you know, shouldn't we be freaking out right now? But yeah. like they're clearly in shock. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was overdone, Travis. I thought about it the rest of the film with that goddamn hand, and yeah. he wouldn't be awake right now. Yes. Yeah, so, whatever. They made a mistake there. I agree. Yeah. But let's decide what we would do. What would we have done? I think people would be, I think a lot of you guys have seen Green Room. You get put into a situation. Like Travis said earlier, this all happens because of a cell phone. Pop into a room to grab the cell phone. Uh oh, dead body there everything changes instantly suddenly everything's at risk and it's a fight or flight scenario the longer they're trapped you know the whole tension with the big dude Mm -hmm. and them Mm -hmm. in the earlier part of the film is fantastic and the way the guy interacts with them and what they Mm -hmm. say back and forth and how they don't they don't trust Imogene Poot's character amber at all they have no trust for her even though she looks terrified and really doesn't present a threat what would you guys have done would you want to be like the drummer and say let's go for it now because we're gonna die anyways i also love when the drummer breaks the bouncer's arm so that he can jump up to assist he like makes that calculated decision that's so cool there's only one Uh, guy who can handle the gun and be like brutal face to face we all think we could be like the badass mm. if we were desperate but that's what this movie does well too is that a lot of everyone's terrified except for him really right and that's when you ask me what I would do, I, I would be terrified. I would probably die early. <laughs> I would do anything that Darcy yeah. and his crew asked me. Period. I would ironically be mauled by a dog because I love dogs. <laughs> You'd be like Pat, the, the Anton Yelkins character, Pat, who says, oh, I don't need a weapon. I'm just going to make a run for it. When they decide to go out the room, he's like, mm-hmm. no, no weapons for me. No uh, half ass fluorescent bulbs. I'm just going to run for bulb, my life. That's not a weapon. That's a prop. If that like that's yeah. a. <laughs> like you have to get them at the exact right angle with that thing for it to be mm-hmm. worth anything. Um, yeah, uh, I d- actually what, what I, one of the parts that makes the most sense to me though in the movie is when they're taking all the furniture around the room and like trying to bust holes in the walls and trying to like yeah like, mm-hmm. trying to bust right. holes in the floor, trying to figure mm-hmm. out everything they can, and then they decide to start using the microphone stand. I'm like, wait a minute. But other than that, uh, like that would be me, the desperate trying to like find an escape. Because I'm not a very violent person. I would have a hard time accepting, I think, the reality that these people are trying to get in here to kill me. I would still probably try to be like, well, you know, they're probably waiting for the cop. You know, you know what I mean? Like it's, it'd be hard to believe that that reality. Yeah. I mean, I've I've learned to like, and this, this is my plan if someone breaks into my house, like go like go behind the door like go behind like on the other side of the door so that way whoever comes in won't see you you'll be in their blind spot like that's the only plan i would have is get in that door (laughs) blind spot and like hope that like you can kill whoever walks in but uh, did you get that internet everybody you got that you know what to do when you break in eric's house well he's gonna do it look behind the door blind spot i'll be there (laughs) (laughs) this movie's actually a meditation on mindset and perspectives it really is because Forget about what you would do. Uh, would I run or would I try to fight or would I be terrified? Everybody's point of view is different, but the, nobody could be right or wrong either because if they had waited it out, it does look like if they had waited it out longer and longer because the whole movie, Darcy's talking about we're up against the clock, we're losing light. There's a constant mm-hmm. need yeah. on his end that this plan has to work in a set amount of time. And I know they don't know that, but if you think about it, to me, one of the fascinating parts of this film is how we see our situations. And like we talked about uh, earlier, what were we talking about where we said, you know, the critics, they all these critics can see a movie this, and they can see it in many different ways. And I think that's one of the most fascinating and enjoyable parts of this film is to see a perspective and see if it's right or wrong. 
But really, that's not the right label either. It's not really like a right or wrong. It's just about uh, time. It really is. Time is the ultimate judge of all these things. Hmm. Yeah, and eventually Darcy's like forensics doesn't matter anymore because he's, he's like constantly right. adapting his plan, yeah. trying to like uh, mm. keep. Eventually, it's just like who cares? We just have to make these yeah. people go away. Uh, <laughs> we, we we tried to finagle it. We tried, but in in doing that, we became more and more committed to the fact that these people have to die before before they can leave here. Mm -hmm. And 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 then to, uh, to go back to your earlier point that they leave him that they leave it to these two inept dudes um and a, and and a dog and, and then go to the other that 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 doesn't necessarily ring true to me it didn't necessarily make sense it seems like they would have uh gone in all together for the final push mm -hmm. uh except for darcy i do believe that he's the kind of scumbag that will have others fight his fight for him the entire time he's not going but, in there but that's the thing too that the longer time went on you're not going to make every right choice. Darcy was eventually going to make a mistake. And so that's his mistake. So I actually buy yeah. that because yeah. this is dragged on longer and longer. And I'm actually just realizing that now that you're saying that, Travis, this jaw just dawned upon me that I buy that more now because he can't always get it right. And if they had waited again, maybe it all would have worked out. They might have yeah. all survived. And once the sun starts coming up, maybe he's just desperate. Mm. Yes. Yes. And also, would you guys get paid? Is 600 bucks enough for you guys to get stabbed? Is that a reasonable fee? Am I a, a teenage neo-Nazi in Portland or outside of Portland? <laughs> sure. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> then yes. Okay. Then yes. I do got to say, like, um, <laughs> I didn't bring this up earlier, but I'm, I'm blessed with, like, that capability to, like, not ha not panic in any really, really fucked up situation. Like, I, I say, they say that, like, like paramedics are like that have that quality do really good in their job. Like I've been in these situations where these insane things have been happening and like, I just, something snaps on my brain and I'm just very calm and I wow. can think very clearly. I don't know if you guys are the same way, but I see that Sometimes. being a benefit here, Sometimes. but I can't fight. So I don't know how, how that could do for me. Yeah. That's pretty much what I was thinking too. Like I, I, I think I actually have surprised myself a couple times in, in moments of crisis. Um, we were talking about, uh, when you got run over that time, Mike. Yes. Um, but yeah. um, so I mean, I have surprised myself, but I, I'm I also just not a violent person. So that I would yeah. maybe have um, more presence of mind than maybe I give myself credit for is probably a true thing. But uh, I'd have a hard time getting physically violent with someone unless unless I they were actively trying to kill me. And and part of the first part of the movie is that they're trying to figure out are these guys really trying to kill us? Yeah, or, or is so this bad. really just a situation that's got yes! out of control? That's whole thank you for saying that. It's right? so awesome. Thank you for it's saying that. Yes. So much. Like, Pat, Anton Yelkin's fear and the terror, and he's getting emotional. He's crying a bit because he doesn't, he's having this yeah. conversation with Darcy through the door, and it's really, really difficult to know what to do. It's easy for us because we get to see the whole picture, but man, that's intense. Yeah. yeah. And Megan Blair seems like the most like natural mediator. Yep. Yep. It confuses everything even more. <laughs> and because he actually doesn't want them to die, mm -hmm. and he actually does just want to defuse the situation and get it all over and, up and done with. So, he, he, like, you're getting this energy from him that this guy actually isn't trying to kill. So it's 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 an extremely, again, as simple as the premise is, the characterization is so complex. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and, and that we didn't even get into Daniel and Worm and Emily and, and their whole, like, love triangle thing and how that ends up having this uh, impact on everybody and, and tadpoles motivations in trying to be a scenester and all this stuff. Like mm. the, the, even like the most yeah. tertiary characters have such complex motivations. Yes, sir. Mike, would you be able to slit that big dude's stomach like that chick does? Yeah. I don't think I could do that. Like Travis yeah, violence is not my strong suit at all. I, I like to think, you know, actually I think I got into counseling because I felt, I was I was down with diving into like people's worst moments. Like I I'm in um, I guess I'm fascinated in a way too. I kind of want to I want to hear what humans have to say about some of the most painful stuff in their life, which may sound kind of, you know, voyeuristic and morbid to some or just really not your cup of tea. But you know, <laughs> well, violence is different. Run lasted like 2 months, didn't it on YouTube? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's true. <laughs> but but like violence is a different animal to me. I mean, I've been in situations where people were in need but when you're i rarely just don't have a lot to go back on when it comes to violent offerings in my face i have so few of those experiences that 
the ones I can actually think of and recall, even though they were maybe just fists, that was really terrifying. So I'm with the people in this room. It's a nightmare. I think that one of the things that the movie that also that's very realistic is that that's true of three fourths of the band and you know three fifths of the people in that room. Uh, the the drummer he's a bit of a brawler, like I said, and he could potentially be violent. And, and he looks does like he was a violent. wrestler, right? But he, <laughs> but he yeah, exactly. But he also doesn't like he's choking that guy out, and he's trying like to not kill him. He's trying to choke him unconscious, but not kill him. And like he's like, but also maybe he's trying to kind of kill him. And Amber just steps up and is like, "This is." This is what someone needs mm. to do this. And so she guts him like a damn fish. And once yeah. she and once she kills, Amber ends up being the real killer for the rest of the movie. I mean, she she kills like two or three other people, mostly with that box cutter, and oh. does what other people like are unable to do to do. Cause so so since she has that ability, that's partly why she lives, and it's partly why Anton Yel- Yeltsin's character lives. She was always ready to do it though, because from the moment right. they got the gun, she was telling them, kill him, yes. kill him. Like, well, she, she also understood the situation better than they did. Too. Yeah, she knows it. People. That's fair. Yeah, that's fair. But to me, yeah, she knew the tr- challenge, and that's why she wasn't hesitating because she already was aware of the nightmare before. Oh, dude, when she comes out of that couch, I mean, that's oh, like man, that's man, like so Arnold awesome. coming out of the fucking uh, soup moment. Like, <laughs> you know, good? when she comes out of that couch is a very great oh, moment cool. for me in cinema. I think like, it's very mm-hmm. cool. Some people would say, would they really suddenly have these plans and make sense of it all? But they've been there all night, and yeah. they've already had their lives flash before their eyes a few times. So I do buy that they take this war con this, you know, this paintball story gets told again and again mm-hmm. about yeah. how much they learn from the true mm-hmm. war vets. And that makes sense to me. I buy it. I do. Cause like at that point, all right, I'm still alive. Maybe we got a chance here. Let's, we got nothing to lose. Fuck it. Let's go for it. Right. Like, let's shave our heads and put on literal face paint and yeah. uh, just go like full bore. Cause what else can we possibly do at this point? Which that's, made, that's uh, what the drummer was. That was yeah. the drummer's. He was already that way. So yeah. in a way, it's almost sad. You're like, oh man. If they all had if the that drummer. Scene, <laughs> yep. Yeah. If they all had that, it's a, it's a. That's another point about this whole situation: unity and timeliness of understanding. That is, it's a fascinating film on so many levels. It really is. Yeah. When Daniel gets shot so suddenly and uh, oh, like, yeah. like shotgun black, like it's like. You really yeah. think that? Oh, finally, they got someone that's going to help him out. <laughs> mm-hmm. it's like, he's like such a red herring because he's just getting yeah. the he's just getting the ball rolling. He's not actually really an important character at all. But when that shotgun blast comes out of nowhere from that bartender, oh damn, it's brutal. Good call. Oh, Very boy. good call. Oh my god! Well, we're already hour and a half, fellas. Yeah. Any other points that we wanted to final get into notes? Here? Yeah, any... Nazi punks fuck off. What is the Dead score? Kennedy's? I'm trying to re- recall the just the. Um... The music in the film, unrelated to the punk rock, um, uh, I don't know if there is. Uh, I don't know minimal, if, if anything. Yeah, I'm not sure that there is. Well, the only time you get it is like when they have that slow mo. There's some yeah ethereal sounds. It's probably in that slow mo when itself. they're on stage. Mm. It um, might be. Yeah, it's a uh, music by Brooke and Will Blair. That might be the actual music they played, though. I don't see yeah. a lot about score or that. So, uh, apparently, a couple of the people knew how to play the instruments. Not everybody in the band knew how to play their instruments. Yeah, they, they do a convincing job, though. Good oh, enough. Yeah, sure. Yeah, you can tell that, you know, they would have been. I can see these people as uh, <laughs> growing into hipsters who outgrow. Because I, I really, Eric, how old do you think these people were, roughly? Uh, 22, 23. Yeah, see, to me, Anton Yelkin seemed a lot older than all of them and made it seem more like he was 30. And, really? And the other, like, Tiger looks very young to me. Tiger looks like he's 19 and mm. uh, the drummer is early 20s. But nobody seems super young to me, in my point of view. Minor detail, but. They all seem, they have this world weariness to them, this witheredness to them. Yeah. That, that yeah. they have to do without even dialogue that totally works. All of the. Yeah. Like all of the nights in the van, sleeping together in the mm-hmm. van, uh, sleeping in these random places, eating cold beans or whatever, peanut butter and jelly. You really get farts. the sense, yeah, fart the jokes. fart jokes in the van. Like you get, you get a real sense of the mileage of the band, pretty much. Yeah, exactly. Like they've been doing this for at least a couple of years. Just this, what we're seeing here, siphoning gla- gas and all that shit, just <laughs> eking out a living. And it's only twelve minutes. It's a really it's a masterclass in how you can set 
the background of mm-hmm. characters mm-hmm. in a timely manner by showing and expressing a lot, by not even saying that much, but just mm-hmm. what you show. If you use your time wisely early on, because they get into the, the venue by about 13 minutes, I think. They're in, it would we're be, there. It'd be so easy to make a movie like this. Like, they're, like okay, it's not fair to compare um, Straight Edge Kegger and another hardcore horror movie to this because they're vastly different budgets and production quality and stuff. Although I did like uh, Straight Edge Kegger. But you could do a movie like this and it would come out that way where you don't really get too much about the characters. and It's just kind of a slasher flick mm-hmm. that happens to be like set in this grungy environment. And it's like, oh, cool. It's like, a, you know, it's like a punk movie. But we actually get to learn the punk, the true punk nature of these people. We actually like there's so much stuffed into this hour and a half. I, again, like I, I think it's, I agree, Eric, it's a masterclass in filmmaking because people should, that make movies should probably, I mean, as much as I love all the Marvel movies or most of the Marvel movies are really starting to get so bloated. I'm like, watch it, watch a movie like this and show me that you can make a concise, good film in an hour and a half. Like it, I'm just, it's, it's, it's in some ways it, it improves the experience with that concision. If it's, if it's not drawn out. Well said. So uh, should we make our rounds? Eric? Well, yeah, I chose the film. Um, I definitely thought it was uh, worth talking about, especially uh, if you you haven't seen the picture. Uh, There's a lot going on. (laughs) There's a lot going on here, man. And in 95 minutes, yeah, when I saw the runtime, I was like, fuck yeah. Uh, This figure is so memorable. There's no fat on it at all, which you know I love. Um, and, and it's such a menacing movie, man. How uh, it's 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 hard for uh, just us regular folks to, to um, realize how tough it is to create. <coughs> excuse me, the atmosphere of menace and of genuine fear and dread. Uh, horror proper gets away with it with so many conceits, but when you got a survival thriller like this. You have to be smart in your writing and you have to make people care about your characters, but you can't make your characters cartoons. Uh, Deliverance does this well uh, uh, also. And this reminds me of it quite a bit. You you get to know these, th- these friends and then when they're put in this situation, you kind of know how each one is going to react to it. And you care about them. You give a shit about characters that you only spend 10 minutes with before they get to this venue. That's not easy, man. Uh, Jeremy Saunier is fucking fantastic, man. Um, I, I love the movie. <laughs> when we talk about Patrick Stewart here, I didn't think about uh, Jean-Luc Picard once. I didn't think about Professor Charles Xavier one goddamn time. I just see this fucking scary, villainous uh, mastermind. Uh, and it's a great performance. Uh, I, I, I love the movie, man. I just want more people to get out there and check it out. Definitely holds up. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Well, uh, okay, I'll go second. Um, it's so well done, which we've already described. We laid it out for you. Jeremy Saulnier, very talented, and the cast is fantastic. Every bit little role is done properly, and you know what? It just comes down to, you know, I don't, I don't really want to sit through this movie, you know? We've talked about certain films that we love that we never want to watch again. You know, I remember the Memento bit from a while back that Travis said, hey, that's a movie you should see, but, you know, it doesn't really hold up anymore. But you should definitely see it because you got to see it at least once. So to me, this is definitely a movie you got to see at least once. Absolutely, for sure. But in terms of uh, <laughs> rewatching this film, it doesn't really interest me even though it's fantastic because it's not the kind of movie I want to just like, you know, I want to go through this because I know what's going to happen. Now I didn't really recall as many details as I thought I would by watching this. This was only my second viewing since I first saw it. So I really didn't, I really thought that Macon Blair was his son and I'm like, Oh yeah, they're going to reveal the son thing. And, and there was things and assumptions I made that weren't accurate. And I, I had no idea that, uh, Daniel would get his head blown off. Like Travis said, that was shocking. I was like, oh, shit. Wow, that came out of nowhere. Well done. 
<laughs> so it's a fantastic film. And it's got hours and hours of layers, like, kind of like the Truman Show. There's so much that you could dive into about human frailty and why we do the things we do. We talk about character. I talk about character motivation a lot. And this is really just about motivation of human beings individually. You got a macro situation with micro units making their choices. And there's consequences for everything. So it's a tremendous film. I got to say it holds up, but I'm certainly not going to be in a rush to watch it again. I just won't. All right. Well, I'm of the opinion that uh, if a movie is fantastic and tremendous, I won't hem and haw about it. I'll just say it fucking holds up. <laughs> <laughs> what a shocker. Very no shocking. hemming or hawing? I, I mean, I, I, made my, I made my few complaints about the film, the bloodlessness. Hmm. Um, of, mm. of the wound, for instance, is a big one for me. I'm not saying it's a perfect movie. Uh, the real star of the show here is, Jer is, is, is Jeremy Saulnier. I think that um, he is someone to just, I'm going to watch every movie that the man makes until he starts disappointing me, and he hasn't thus far. I don't think he will if he keeps on making stuff like this. It's, it's really just a top-notch movie. Um, not a horror movie as far as I'm concerned. I don't, I don't, I don't really understand no. what people call it a horror movie just because uh, there's horrific conditions here. Um, but man, uh, yes, I still, I walked out still thinking, yep, still one of my favorites of the century so far. Yeah. It's a suspense thriller, a little bit of an action flick in a way. Yeah. It's yeah. a drama. Yeah, yeah. I don't, it's a siege I'm with movie. you there. It's, just, it's mm -hmm. like, yeah, it's, it's like, uh, yeah. uh, Pelham you know, one, two, three. Exactly. I was about to say Pelham one, two, mm. three, or a Precinct Precinct 13. 13, right. It's, yeah. it's like that kind of thing. Love it. Yeah. yeah. Well, there it is. We did it. We broke it down. Green room. We did it. Three holds up. Thry glasses. That's right. So everybody, we hope you enjoyed that. And if you didn't, well, it's strange that you'd still be watching or listening at this point. So maybe that's yeah. <laughs> maybe, you, uh, maybe you fell down and couldn't reach the, uh, the button to turn us off. Hope you're okay. Yeah, maybe you had a lot of blood loss and you just woke up. And you're like, oh my god, what happened? Uh, this movie held up. Oh yeah. So there his, you go. His his, uh, his desert island band is CCR, right? That's uh, what I read yeah. in the uh, trivia. Oh well, that's what I assume. So that's the. The band they played. Yeah. Who's your guys' Desert Island band? Oh, Jesus. Impossible. I couldn't give you a good answer right now. It's so <laughs> hard. It's, it's hard, oh, right? I've been trying Brutal. to think of it for days and I couldn't really come up with it. No wonder he has a hard time. Wow. Oh, you know, I had somebody ask me recently, would you rather, for the rest of your life, would you rather listen to one song only forever? Mm -hmm. Or would you rather listen to any song and any time for the rest of your life, but they all had to be done by Pitbull? So he could be, it could be any song, but Pitbull <laughs> is doing that song Pitbull instead. Covers? So you, yeah. Can I, yeah can I just not listen to music anymore? Damn. <laughs> well, at least take the one song. I'll yeah. take the one song. Can you learn to love Pitbull? Is it an nope. acquired taste? You cannot. I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I, mean, I haven't tried, song. so I won't rule it out. <laughs> take the one song. Sorry, Pitbull. I don't even know his songs. I don't know anything about you, Pitbull. I'm so sorry. Oh, I'm not. not that you care. All right. Now. Well, there it is. CinemanIPod at gmail.com. Of course, next week, we're going to do my movie, which I will select now. Every week, we choose the movie for the following week. So you guys have a whole week to watch that film and then join us, whether it's on YouTube or on your preferred podcast platform. And it's the holidays, so I'm going to throw this out there real quick. If you don't mind, if you love our show, grab all of your relatives' phones at Thanksgiving and just mm -hmm. say, hey, can I borrow your phone for a second? I'm just going to write a review for the show I love. It won't <laughs> hurt them. It won't change anything. Be a nice little treat. I'm going to try to do that tomorrow. I've never done it before, but I'm, yeah, I'm actively going to try to do it tomorrow because I've never done that. I'm going to be like, mom, give me your phone. Uh, dude, give me your phone. There's not a lot of people at our Thanksgiving, but I'm going to try. So, wow. Having said that, all right. next week's movie. Yeah. Why, why are you telling people this? I know it's because that's what because that's what everybody does. This is not I unusual. Heard, I heard that's trust thing. me. Yeah, you've you've heard this. Eric knows. So next week we got a couple options. So I'll give you. I like to give you guys. Uh, you know my. Uh, I'll give you two choices, and we'll see what you guys agree upon. So we could either do the movie from. Uh, <laughs> I don't know about that. Okay. Yeah. 
Uh, okay, so like we can either do the movie from movie from 2001, <coughs> or we can do a movie from 2006. Damn. We got genres? Like, what's... What, like? Uh, I'm not going to tell you I don't know what else. I'm picking here. I'm just here. giving you those two years. Yeah. Well, you could do the uh, comedy or the... I guess it's an action film. Oh, I'll take the action movie. Travis, what are you thinking over there? I don't know. I'll say 2006. Okay, well, there it is. That's the action movie. So okay. <laughs> I, maybe I mislabeled it. But we're going to do 2006's Superman Returns, starring Brandon Routh, directed by the man who will not be named. <laughs> All right. <laughs> We're talking Brian we Singer next week. Holy shit. Wow. I mean, wow. how can I complain? We have Parker Posey in the film. I say no more. I'll That's watch true. Anything. Oh, and Kevin Spacey's in it. <laughs> Fuck. Man, That's I right, really yep. put us in a spot here. It's very canceled <laughs> movie. <laughs> yeah. I really, I wish, hey, you, I wanted you guys to pick 2001, but you didn't. So we'll have to save that for another time. There it I'm is. Interested. Yeah. Next week we do it. You could have picked it. <laughs> I could have. You're right. <laughs> Dragon Movie Guy says, love the John Williams Superman theme yeah. popping up in oh. Black Adam. Oh, yeah, that's a spoiler like alert. Uh, all right. Dragon wow. Movie Guy. I haven't seen Black Adam. No, I, I assume nobody else has. No one has <laughs> in America <laughs> or the world. <laughs> the Rock. Wow, a, mer- a rare miss for The Rock. There it is. Our show is done. It's been a pleasure. Mm-hmm. We hope you have a wonderful holiday, your Thanksgiving. And if you've seen this in eight months after Thanksgiving, we just hope you enjoy your weekend or your night. It's been a pleasure doing the show. cinema 9 at gmail.com. For Travis, Eric, I'm Michael. Take it easy. Adam Blade.